Okay. This is now public. Okay. Okay, I'm sending you invitation. Wow, there are a lot of Tim Neffs out there. This does not help. Who else is on Google Plus in the newsroom? Yeah, yeah, right. That's the problem. It's like Teresa Buckley with a flower. I don't know if that's Teresa or not. Okay. Now we're both there. Yeah. Now, is this being broadcast on... Where is this being broadcast? Well, I guess if you picked up the YouTube embed, mm -hmm. it would be on your... Uh, you could put it on the blog, and that's where it would be broadcast. Mm -hmm. And then I guess so I'm, I'm going to Capcom, but then I'm also going to go to... I'm going to grab the embed. YouTube. Search. Let's do. We call it state senate control. Right? Mm -hmm. So where this lives on YouTube is beyond me because I'm searching YouTube nine ways a Sunday and I'm not finding it. I mean, not that, that really matters because we're kind of yeah. assuming people will watch it on the blog. Well, here, I'll go to my channel. Yeah, okay. So show me my movies. No, not that. Come on. My channel. Right. Okay. State Senate Control. Live now. Okay, so when I go to it. Yeah, it's there. They're live now. Okay, so when I go to it. On YouTube. Yeah, it's there. On YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so hmm. This video is public. It's funny, if I search yeah. your name, I get a lot of the New York Now things. It's uh, try, do a search for Casey Sile 1. So C A S E Y S E I L numeral 1. Now things. 
it's uh, try to search for Casey Sile one. So C A S E Y S E I L in one. It's uh, try to search for Casey Sile one. So C A S E Y S E I L in one. How it would be available to me on YouTube is when at the end of your hangout you say publish it and then I think it would be available to me. But it should be available to you now. It should be available live. Is when at the end of your hangout you say publish it and then I think it would be available to me. I tried searching channels, I've tried searching videos, I've tried today, I've tried you're looking, the Casey for, style you're looking one. for Casey Style 1? Yeah. Okay. Jesus. I'm getting things from Casey, Illinois. Well, here, I'll send you this. Um, I'll send you the embed code, but I don't know if that's going to do it for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or not the embed, but the link. That's pretty sure I what you meant. You get it? Okay. But what I do want to do is. Yeah, there it is. That is so strange. <clears throat> it's gonna need the way it flips back and forth. So if I share this, So you can see it now, right? I can definitely see it now, and actually I'm using their little share doofers to uh, put it out on all my various social media channels. Because what I'm curious is... The way you set it up, it was mm -hmm. private based on you know what they said. Mm -hmm. But then if I can turn around from the YouTube settings and share it, would somebody still be able to participate or would they only be able to watch? I don't know. Well, what are you looking at? Does it look like... Here, let me send you a... This might be the better link. I don't know. I can't get my video camera to go... 
try that one. Yeah, that's a better link. Here's my question. So we seem to have achieved liftoff in terms of making this thing available to people, right? Yeah, I think so. So my question is, what should I tell people if they want to take part? What uh, should they do? Go to Google Plus and seek seek me out. I think so. Yeah, I think, and I think what might be the case is, you know, you. But then they have to have Google Plus IDs as well, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. And I think what I think what <clears throat> well, we'll just we'll go through the you know the mechanics of it today and just see mm -hmm. what what we decide. But you know, I think what if we were going to use this tool for this kind of interaction, mm -hmm. um, I think we would have to say exactly that, and you know, in some kind of recording because. You can then broadcast what you know the, the five minutes that you record, yeah, and and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this weekly. The key is that I would want to interact with you, but for you to interact with me, you have to be on Google Plus, and uh, you know we have to be in each other's circles. Uh, otherwise, you're just broadcasting as you do no differently than me right now. Mm -hmm. um, So one, get on get on Google Plus and establish a profile. And I just sent out a TU editorial note to uh, help this out. <clears throat> Uh, and then uh, send what? Uh, atten uh, join my join my circle. Yeah. Find you and add you to their circles. I think would be the way to say that. And add me to your circle. Yeah. And then sign up for the join the join the discussion in progress. Because I saw that you were hanging out. Mm -hmm. Because I'm following you. Right. You're in one of my circles. Right. I suppose what you may want to do is when you get notifications that new people have put you in circles, you may just want to reciprocate um, to make it easier to just say, you know, all my circles. Oh, Jordan is really too funny. <laughs> um, okay, so... So, okay, here's what I've got written for this right now. 
do you have any questions about the battle for control of the state senate? Have you ever used Google Plus? Both are topics that we're all just finding our way on. So please join us for our May 5th. If you want to join a Google Plus hangout on this topic, here are a few steps to follow. Get on Google Plus and establish a profile on that fine social media platform if you haven't already. Find Casey Seiler and add me to your circle. Right? Mm -hmm. Join the discussion in progress. We'll start around 11.30. That works. Does that work? Is that Does that sound pass. like that's the best we're going to get at this point? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's a test. We're trying yeah. to see. I mean, it's the technology, the business thing is so cool, but yeah. it's so parochial to be limited within this one stupid platform. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to post up with, okay. with links to the various, you know, links to Google+. Plus. Links to the um, the the YouTube thing, and we'll just plan on starting it at like eleven. I'll I'll post this up at I'll post it up now, and okay. uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and, but right now I'm going to turn my mic off. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.
know if I'm seeing. I want to see what the regular public's going to see. So all just, right. So okay. here's. Oh, here's you said this. you're on it. Let me just make sure that you're on. It. Okay, why don't you come on now? Thanks. Okay, good. That's working. I'm going to go ahead. Do you hear me? I heard you. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to, this is at 1130. We're going to do this? Yeah, yeah. So Jay is coming now. All right. I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> Hi. So we are live, so I don't think anybody's watching, but someone. Oh, okay. Here. You're going to want to. Should we close this since we're yes. going to be talking yeah. probably louder yeah. than usual? Yeah. Okay. So, what exactly is this? So. It's a test. He he's not paying attention to us yet. Oh, he is. Hi. Hey. I think he's still. There, there we go, go boys. Hi. Hey, Jay. There we are. We okay. are live. So yeah, we are we are live, and for some reason so, I'm getting it's echo. A test. He, she's not paying attention to us yet. Oh, he is. Hi. So hey. it's a test. He, I'm gonna sign out of the cat con. Oh, he is. Hi. There we go, boys. Hey, Jay. There we are. We are live. So yeah, we are we are live, and for some reason I'm getting echo. I know why I'm getting echo. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to sign out of the cat con. Okay. Hey, oh, that's much better. Can I think I had it planning now? on maybe three other things. Can you hear me live now? I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. So I'm going to hold up my finger right now. You hold up your finger just as you see my finger go up. I just want to make sure we're synced. All right. Close enough. Close <laughs> okay. enough. Close. Okay. I noticed the lag, too. So why are we here? <laughs> we're having a, uh, a Google Plus Hangout uh, in which we were hoping to... Um, take questions from people about control of the state senate. Now, people on Capital Confidential are watching this exchange right now. So Already? Yeah, I mean we'll we'll start at about 11:30. So oh, okay. And it's going on the tagchain.com homepage. Got it. There's yeah, there's a there's a uh, there's a story linking to Capital Confidential, but people who are on Cap Capital Confidential right now are watching us right now. Okay. So so let's watch the bad language. Um, Are we on yet? No, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> That's an existential well, question. We are. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm trying to find out if people are trying to join the circles. It would appear that so far we are the only two participants in this discussion. Uh -huh. And the idea of the discussion is that we would take some questions from people or thoughts from people? Uh, either or. Mm -hmm. We could maybe start the discussion with our... Ah. Oh, hi, there's Rick Carlin. Rick Carlin. Uh, either or. And, uh, and Rick is probably... Rick, you got to turn off... Uh, you're probably watching this at the same time on Capital Confidential. you got to turn it off. Uh, either or. And Rick is probably Rick. You got to turn off. Uh, you're probably watching this at the same time. On Capital Confidential. You got to turn it off. Uh, either or. And Rick is probably Rick. You got to turn off. Uh, you're probably watching this at the same time. On Capital Confidential. You got to turn it off. Uh, either or. Yes, you got to turn off Capital Confidential. There. I think you just fixed it. Now, do you have your camera on? Because right now we're just looking at a picture of you and your ski parka. Anyway, Casey was open to the idea of doing these weekly uh -huh. on state well, that's issues. Fun. That'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, because it's it's at the if you open it up. 
Oh, this is interesting. He can hear him, but we can't. Yeah. I think he called him. Um, oh. And when we get our ducks in a row, this is our first one, so it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a test. I imagine that Casey would open with some kind of introduction of the team people participating right. and then say, we're talking about this today, but certainly whoever wants to join in will take your That's a cool questions idea. and comments. So. Wait. Tell Casey. Say Case. Yeah. We um, are ready to go live. They're ready to go live on the web. All right. Are we ready? Well, I mean, if if people want to join in, they certainly they certainly can. And um, uh, but for right now, maybe you and I can just have a discussion. Yeah. So t maybe uh, talk a little bit about the about today's editorial, which which kind of took the the question of of control of the of the Senate and where the leadership fight is going um, uh, as its as its topic. Yeah, I think you know I think you know there's a wariness about this because of past experience um, that you know anytime you have a group of people who are sort of acting as their own. Um, you know, power brokers or, or, or want to be power brokers and potential king makers and so forth that, you know, you immediately, you know, it's an, I think it's impossible for anyone who's been following New York politics not to immediately wonder, is this another, you know, uh, Amigos um, enterprise where people are, uh, you know, really just, you know, looking out for themselves. But, you know, everything if we, when we stepped back and looked at it, you know, everything that, that, that Klein in particular is saying, you know, is the right thing, that he's got a good agenda, we think, you know, it, we agree with his agenda, so, you know, <laughs> so he's already, uh, he's already got a few points there, and, um, you know, we also understand politics is transactional, we, we get that. Um, there, there's going to be give and take, there's going to be tit for tat, and, you know, you don't get some influence over legislation without also having some clout, some power, um, and with that often comes, you know, you get more staff and so forth. But, you know, the bottom line of what we were trying to tell them is, look, if this is just going to be another foray into what the Amigos did, um, that, that's a, that, that'd, be real, that'd be real bad. It wouldn't just well, be sad, it would be bad. Okay, but, but here's the question. When is something Amigos-like? Is it Amigos like when it results in uh, in the accumulation of power for a small group, let's say four lawmakers in the Senate, or is it amigo like when uh, you know when a, uh, when a quartet, for example, are able to are able to kind of shanghai the agenda disproportionately to their numbers? You know, when, like is it amigo like when bad people do it, or is it amigo like even if it's responsible lawmakers such as, you know, I, I think we can all agree that Dave Valesky and David Carlucci and Diane Savino and Jeff Klein are not sleazebags like a uh, number of the, uh, of, of the Amigos were, are. I would say it's Amigo like when it's bad people. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, hijacking an agenda versus driving an agenda. I think we, you know, I don't know that I could spell it out really specifically, um, you know, give you an absolute perfect definition of the two, but I think we all know it when we see it, when somebody is, is, is A, hijacking an agenda, and B, for sale to the highest bidder, as, mm -hmm. as certainly a spot in Montserrat were. Um, and yes, I, I, I think that, you know, we all expect lawmakers to go in and be effective, and it is very hard. Um, for, for a minority legislator to be effective. So here, um, the independent Demo the members of the Independent Democratic Conference have carved themselves out a, you know, potential, it's only potential at this point, measure, measure of influence, and said, look, we are willing to work with the opposition party, and um, here's our agenda. And the fact that they've come in with an agenda, not here's the committee seat I want, and here's the title I want, and here's the amount of money I want, and here's the staff I want, and here's the stipend I want. I mean, they're coming in, in a, as far as we can tell, in a very different way. They're saying, here's the bill I want, here's the other bill I want, here's, what, here's the reform I want. I mean, that's, that's productive. And so I would say it's not amigo-like. It, 
it potentially has the ability to drive an agenda that admittedly we very much agree with. Is, does, the, does the danger exist that <clears throat> whatever the, the legislation that would emerge from this kind of two-headed conference would be so kind of watered down that it essentially turns the Democratic agenda inside out in a Republican way and vice versa? You know, I, I guess the, the, the flip side of that is that it would require true compromise as opposed to the kind of gridlock that you now get from an assemb a Democratic assembly passing a piece of legislation that they know a Republican Senate is never going to pass and vice versa because we see that quite a lot on any number of issues. That was the way that gay marriage was hung up for a long, long time. Absolutely. I, and, and, you know, a good example of it is um, independent redistricting that, you know, forgetting about the pledge, forgetting about what they didn't do, what they finally did in the end was put together a constitutional amendment that as um, someone from, um, uh, what was it, New York Uprising, um, pointed out this week at the um, uh, meeting that they had over at the Rockefeller Institute on, on the Constitution, this is an inadequate constitutional amendment. It is, and, and I fully agree with him on that. Well, I do anyway. We do, as a board, we have not reached that con but we did reach that conclusion. We didn't agree with the, the amendment several months ago. So that's an example, I think, of exactly what you're talking about, that you know, here you've got a compromise and you end up with a watered down provision, um, or a watered down proposal anyway. And you're right, I, I don't, I, you, if it's just the independent Democrats cutting deals with the Republicans that are wholly inadequate, well, I guess, you know, in the end, that becomes the, um, uh, you know, the same problem you always have in the legislative process, that sometimes compromise goes too far and, 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 it, and it doesn't work. So if, if, if they simply want to have accomplishments to, to say, hey, we got this passed, but it's a lousy bill, you always face that peril, I think is, is, is the, what I'm I mean, does the, does the Senate, like the Assembly as it's currently structured, simply require that there is that there is one person, uh, sort of with with the whip hand, if you will, that just as we have, you know, there's a majority. Le we currently have the majority leader, which is, I'm pretty sure the 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 kind of responsibilities and powers of the majority leader are kind of delegated by the rules of the Senate, not necessarily specified in the state constitution. What the state constitution requires is that there be a temporary president of the Senate. Um, but beyond that, the rules of the Senate are kind of up to the body. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen, even if the rules are written by the body, the ultimate rule is that the majority conference gets to determine when the rules are being followed and when they're not getting followed. We've seen that. You know, there was lots of, uh, there was much talk of reform. Some of it actually took place after uh, 2010 and even and even before, but you saw lots of things that, that got passed just get ignored, like the idea that uh, the minority can petition for a hearing on any issue. We, I, I myself was personally witness to the Republicans essentially uh, uh, taking a, uh, a petition from the Democrats uh, pushing for a hearing on Governor Cuomo's program bill on redistricting and essentially saying, well, the, our council said, the Rules Committee's council said that it was not in order, so we don't have to abide by it. And, well, it was up to the clerk. What can you do? So the, the ultimate rule is what you're going to do about it. Exactly. Are, is it, wait a minute. Is that a question? <laughs> I guess it. I guess it was sort of a question, but I mean, would would you agree with that? That that the the only thing that's really required is sort of the the uh, the naming of a temporary president. That cannot be a two headed beast. That's got to be one dude or lady. Right, and you know, as you know, there's a, there's a weird di dynamic there that you know, you, or there's a weird kind of stage being set there, and I don't know if it's just part of the part of the early negotiation of this, but you've got Klein saying he's not going to vote for, not going to vote for a Democrat or a Republican. What does that, that only mean? Leaves, that only leaves one option, I guess, a member of the independent Democratic, Democratic conference member. <laughs> that's, that's a thought. 
Um, you know, that's going to be up to the body, and I don't know if they're going to accept that. Um, you know, that deal, any deal that's cut can go bad at any time. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sure Dean Skelos and his conference are well aware of that, as, as, as John Sampson is, that, you know, any deal you cut with the Independent Democratic Conference to put them in the center of this whole thing is, um, boy, it's, it's a risky proposition um, for that, not, not, not for us as citizens, but, you know, for, for, the, for the people in power. It would, it is a, it's a very weird dynamic because not, not, not everything else is at stake here. The, um, whoop, I lost you and I now have Rick on my screen. That's right. Um, do you still have me? I do. Now I have you. It's kind of flipping back and forth. I'm not sure why, but we're okay. I lost um, you. And have Rick on my screen. It's a weird dynamic because you still have me. Yeah, you know, over this whole reform agenda that we've talked about is also the issue of who gets what. It's a weird dynamic because you still have me. You know, over this whole reform agenda. Hey, you got to turn it off. You're watching it and taking part in it. It's creating an echo. Yes, yeah. Which one do I turn off? It's a weird dynamic you're watching it. Technical difficulties. There we go. <laughs> Rick, Rick is attempting. If, if any of you are watching this, please understand this is a, uh, a, a pioneering effort in, uh, in this, uh, this mode of interactivity. And Rick was uh, watching the discussion while also taking part in the discussion, which of course creates a feedback effect. So. Yeah. And I would also point out, and I'm sure Rick would be the first to agree with me, that when it comes to technology, it's not always his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Uh, no, no. I mean, you know. Well, let me yeah. let me let me put it this way. This is something I said to somebody before. Uh, journalists these days have to be uh, kind of uh, uh, more more willing than a uh, Dodge City hooker to uh, try just about anything in terms yeah. of not necessarily selling themselves, but in being willing to try just about everything. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that is true? I, yeah, I would. Okay. And, and actually, this is a whole new thing for me. I walked in here, and that's why I, I started before I think we, we went live, saying, well, what are we doing here? Because <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea what a Google Meetup was. I thought we were having a little staff meeting or something. Um, then that works too. But I'm sorry, getting getting back to uh, getting back to the fate of the state senate. So. Right. Get the you know we all know that behind you know all the other things that we that we can talk about about legislation and and and, and, and political and, and political and campaign finance reform and all all those other things is you know who gets the big chairs, who gets the big office, who gets you know this and that and the other thing, and that is a very big deal. Patron the patronage that goes along. Right. with it, the money that comes with it that you can then get, get back to your constituency um, and, and keep yourself getting elected, um, you know, which isn't necessarily just a selfish thing. It's also, you know, if you want to serve in government, you want to be effective. I understand that. Right. But and that and that's the challenge that that's the challenge that we face just as you face it. You have a little bit more leeway, of course, because you can, of course, passionately frame an argument around these around these issues. But how do we make what it can appear on the face of it to be internecine uh, political squabbling seem, you know, that if, you are, if your kid has been arrested for marijuana possession in New York State, um, the, the ability to reform stop and frisk laws or, or, uh, or possession laws plays a role in your life. And all that gets funneled through the state Senate. And who controls the state Senate makes a a great deal of of, uh, of importance in that. Yep. So it's, you know, just to take it back to the, you know, where the power struggle is right now, it's not a bad thing if if you did not have the Independent Democratic Conference. Um, you know, this is, I think, as we said, putting it in the best light. If we, if we didn't have this conference and we end up with a 32, uh, 31, split in the Senate, the Republicans can still kiss the Democrats completely off and say, we don't need you. Right. We don't need to talk about your agenda. We don't need to do anything. You can just be the voices crying out in the wilderness. And by the way, here's the tiny office we're giving you to, which, you know, that's been the history of, of how this is run. So I, I think Klein and company have added an interesting dynamic to this. The the proof will be in, in whether or not we see a real agenda coming out of it and we see a 
you know, what I would call a progressive agenda moving forward, and a real one, not, as you, as you pointed out, not one that is passing bills for the sake of passing bills, so everyone can say, look how, look how good our coalition is working. And, and wouldn't you say that the, the proof is going to be in the pudding, that you'll be able to tell whether this works or not in the first couple of weeks, because clearly, Klein and the IDC, if, if in fact, Cecilia Katchik wins in the 46th Senate District, which then forces some kind of coalition between the GOP and the IDC to maintain control of the chamber, that when they arrive back in January, Klein has to be able to point to some very quick action on uh, some very democratic-seeming agenda items in order to, to, to kind of hang the pelt on the wall, as it were, so he can say, look, this works. Democrats will be able to get enough of what they need to uh, to be happy with the way that things are functioning. That's a good point. I, I had you know I hadn't considered the timing of this. That you know often what happens is you get you know everybody gets back and there's this lull till the um, state of the state, and then there's another lull till you get to the budget, and then there's kind of a lull till April first or March thirtieth, and then and then you know sometime later you get a big ugly. Um, right. Yeah. And. and you're right. I think I think you're right. I, I think that um, to to con to persuade everybody that this works, they're going to have to have some real clear accomplishments up front. You know, it it may well it may just come down to some uh, you know some rules changes that are laid out, and you know where they say, look, this is how we're going to proceed for this um, for this session, and uh, we want to change the rules in, in, in X, Y, and Z. They've done this before, and then of course. They said, oh, well, the rules don't work the way we said they work. They yeah. work this way. This is the secret way they work. Um, if, if there's real progress in that direction up front, that could be something that they, ha that they hang their hats on. You know, minim minimum wage, unfortunately, and, and there are folks, and I think Cecilia, Cecilia Katchik was one of them, I think there are people that as much as, as, much as I think this is the way it's going to work out is that they're going to have to um, – Put together Balance a compromise. It with some tax cuts for small businesses. Cuts. Right. There are some Democrats, uh, Katchik being one of them, I think, who have said, no, I, I, don't, I don't like that. I, I really don't like the idea of saying the only way the, poor, the working poor can have, a, have a, a, a wage hike is to give you know, business owners tax cuts. So there's going to be a lot of give and take there, and there, that may be one of the things that goes into a broader compromise package may not be able to get that done right away is my point. Um, you know, but some other things on the list, the marijuana one, I think, is that's a doable one up front. And because that's one that the governor has, that, that kind of comes out of the governor's stable. But don't you think that if a, a boost in the minimum wage, a, a, a relatively significant boost in the minimum wage comes to the floor, even if it includes the kind of Republican uh, the republic, uh, the longed for Republican tax cuts for small businesses, every Democrat is going to, they're going to vote for it. They're going to say, I'm appalled that uh, Republicans, you know, to, to, to take your argument that they think that the only reason they can aid the poor is by, uh, by also giving business a break. Um, but they're not going to vote against it because right. then Republicans and conceivably the IDC would be able to take full credit for uh, for Im improving a lot of uh, of New York's workers. Yes, yes. I, you know I think it'll, I, I think ultimately for the pragmatists and most of I, I like to think most of them are. Um, yeah. I could be wrong, <laughs> but you know for the pragmatists, no, I mean, most I, most of them are. It, it yeah. would, most of them are pragmatists. It's mm -hmm. the people. It's it's the the self interested and the true ideologues in the state senate. They're kind of few and far between. They are. They are. And, you know, I think the only way the bill really gets hung up, I think you're right, you know, there, there may be some, uh, you know, huffing and puffing about it, but, you know, in the end, if there's a minimum wage hike on the table, it should pass. Where it could go wrong is if the, I, I, I think the Democrats are going to want to see some, some relationship between the two, that if there's going to be tax cuts, they should have to do with um, the burden that small businesses might feel if they have to, you know, significantly increase their payroll. Oh, hey, Rick. and Rick has joined us. I'm back. Rick. I unplugged my other screen. That was the problem. Awesome. awesome. There you go. 
Well, we were just you're here just in time to see us wind up this wonderful discussion. Uh, this has been a complete flop as an attempt to draw readers into the conversation, but a real success in terms of a, uh, a provocative discussion of the issues surrounding control of the state senate. Yeah, that was good. All right, cool. Well, well, thanks we'll a lot, you guys. Well, other people. Okay, we'll do it again. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.